the official opposition. Emergency Measures Act on Canadians without justification, and now he's trying to hide it. His ministers admitted they won't be cooperating with the inquiry, and they'll be hiding behind cabinet, cabinet confidence, of course. How many times have they used that one? We, SNC, Winnipeg Lab documents, the list goes on. Their dirty work is always too secret for anyone to watch. This inquiry will be nothing but an exercise in nasty liberal political spin and nothing about transparency or accountability. Isn't that the truth? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. When illegal blockades hurt workers and endangered public safety, police were clear that they needed tools not held by any federal, provincial or territorial law. It was only after we got advice from law enforcement that we invoked the Emergencies Act. The Canadian Policing Association, Canadian and Ontario Associations of Chiefs of Police all agree this is how the legislation should be used for emergencies. We have now announced the independent inquiry to examine the circumstances that led to the declaration and the measures taken in response. And I know we all look forward to Justice Rulo's excellent work. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Wedge, divide and stigmatize. That's what this Prime Minister is about and that's what this inquiry is going to be about. Another chance for him to call innocent people racist and misogynist and accuse them of all kinds of things that are factually not true. The purpose of this inquiry on the use of the Emergencies Act is for Canadians to see the reason why the government used it. Not a chance for Liberals to insult and divide. Why is the Prime Minister so afraid to show Canadians what reasons he had or didn't have to use the Emergencies Act. What is he trying to hide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when our government invoked the Emergencies Act, we committed to Canadians that we would be upfront and transparent about it. We have kept that commitment and the Commission and independent public inquiry is further evidence of that. As we've made clear, we will work directly with the Commission to ensure that they're able to complete their work because uh, Canadians uh, demand answers and that's exactly what we're delivering. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Well, in a shocking revelation yesterday, the Prime Minister admitted he didn't use a loophole to get away with his illegal holiday. He didn't give himself permission. We know from the Complaints Commissioner that there were some hurdles to the RCMP doing their work, but they were not insurmountable. Yesterday, the Prime Minister removed one of those hurdles. Conservatives have asked the RCMP to reopen their criminal investigation into his activities. My question for the Prime Minister is, will he cooperate with the RCMP? Will he meet with the RCMP? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It's clear that the Conservative Party has run out of ideas and material when they choose to raise issues that were brought up by the Conservative leader three Conservative leaders ago. Right. Mr. Speaker, I know they want to distract from their current leadership race, but there are real issues facing Canadians from rising cost of living to Putin's illegal war in, in Ukraine. Those are the issues that I'm focused on. While they focused on me, we continue to remain focused on Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. There is no statute of limitations on fraud charges, I will inform the Prime Minister. This is very serious, Mr. Speaker. This is a big deal. The Prime Minister of Canada has potentially committed criminal offences. We're talking about possible charges against the Prime Minister of this country. The Prime Minister has to know how serious this is. The Prime Minister has to know he is not above the law. So my question for the Prime Minister is, has he met with private criminal counsel regarding these potential charges? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Conservative politicians want to continue manufacturing distractions on matters that were dealt with years ago, instead of talking about the economy, talking about the environment, talking about things that Canadians care about. What's clear is they don't want to talk about making sure our econ economic recovery leaves no one behind. They don't want to talk about or even acknowledge the climate crisis. They definitely don't want to talk about making our communities safer by banning assault weapons. They want to talk about me. So while they stay focused on me, I'll stay focused on Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the 
official opposition. In 2016, the Prime Minister of Canada broke four separate sections of the Ethics Act. In doing so, we have found out just in the last week he may have broken criminal law. This Prime Minister likes to break the rules, we know that. It all started with That's that true. illegal holiday, but it's continued with his illegal activity and interference with the SNC-Lavalin trial, his illegal benefits from the WE Foundation, just to mention a few. This is a Prime Minister who is always pushing the boundaries of ethical contact, con conduct and contact, and coming as close as he can to breaking the law. And he seems to get away with it. But maybe, Mr. Speaker, maybe not this time. Is the Prime Minister above the law? Wow. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. What the Conservative Party is making very clear is that they don't want to talk about investments in childcare. They don't want to talk about how to close the infrastructure gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities. They don't want to talk about investments in green infrastructure. They don't want to talk about making sure that the wealthiest pay their fair share. And they definitely don't want to talk about protecting a woman's right to choose. No. Mr. Speaker, while they focus on personal tax on me, we'll stay focused on the things that matter to Canadians.